Hello, I'm Shelley Duval. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Ever since sailors have sailed the seas, they have told stories of the mermaids who live in the deep and come to the surface so rarely that they can only be glimpsed by those who know where to look. For the flash of a little white arm in the curl of a wave, for the glint of a tail rippling the waters of a quiet cove, for the glimmer of a small fair head peeping from behind the rocks, just as a wave breaks over them. Then she is gone, and the sailor is left to wonder. Yet once upon a time, one mermaid did tarry long enough above the surface to encounter a handsome young sailor and to hold him in her arms. This is her story, the story of the Little Mermaid. Far below the waves, in the deepest part of the ocean, lived a little mermaid. Her name was Pearl, and she was my youngest daughter, the daughter of King Neptune. On the morning of her 21st birthday, I had given her permission to go up to the surface of the ocean for the very first time. Pearl was a charming creature, possessed of a delightful singing voice and the liveliest curiosity about the world of men which she herself had never seen. And so when her older sisters, Coral and Anemone, came to wish her a happy birthday, she was eager to question them about the world above. Oh, those mortals are impossible, always spying on us. Yes, yeah, so trying to catch us with hooks as though we were fish. Pearl, those mortals act like they own the whole planet. When you go up to the surface today, take my advice and stay away from them. Well, how am I going to do that unless I know what they look like? Well, I saw one once. They're not so very ugly. You did? Tell us about it. Yes, tell us about it. Well, his skin was very, very white. And his eyes were open very wide, but he didn't seem to be looking at anything. He was just floating face down, quite still. He wasn't frolicking or looking for food or anything. That's because he was dead. Dead? Men cannot live in our world. Nor are we in theirs. They are mortal human beings, and we are mythical creatures. Oh, what does mythical mean? It means that men are always making up stories about us. Yes, they say we are sirens. Sirens? <laughs> sirens are another branch of the family altogether. They don't speak to us, and we don't speak to them. I still wish I knew what mortals looked like. Well, for one thing, they have legs so they can walk around instead of swim. Legs? And walk? You mean like the crabs? <laughs> well, sort of. But not really, you see. They're split up the middle. And they walk around on these little sticks on dry land. What is dry? Anything that isn't wet, silly. Although it has its wet parts, too. Well, I can't wait to go to the surface. Oh, yes, you can. First, we have to give you our present, Pearl. <gasps> we made it ourselves. Oh, Coral and Nimini, it's beautiful! Father is waiting for you. Swim along now.
Among underwater circles, King Neptune was still considered a very handsome ruler. And if over the years my figure had thickened slightly about the middle, why my beard had grown almost long enough to cover it. Good morning. How's the birthday mermaid? Well, I'm finally on my way up to the surface. Not so fast, my little pearl. For some reason, this reminded me of you. Oh, Father, it's beautiful. I'll never take it off. Now you can be on your way. But remember, you must return by sunrise tomorrow. Father, why can I only stay for one day? Uh, a lot can happen in one day. I know, but I've waited so long. I know. When I was your age, I felt the same way. But you want to live to be 300 years old? You must learn to move a little more slowly. The world of men can be very dangerous. Oh, I know all about the world of men, Father, and their hooks. Hooks aren't the half of it, my dear. But I suppose you must find out for yourself. I know I did. Only promise me one thing. You must never forget that this is your home. This is where you belong, little pearl of my heart. I promise, Father. That's my good little mermaid. <laughs> the little mermaid bade her father goodbye and swam upward toward the light. She knew that the big ball of fire that hung in the sky above the ocean was called the sun. Today, she would see it for the first time and feel its warmth. She had spent so many hours imagining what the world above the surface of the ocean would be like when at long last she saw it for the first time. She could hardly believe her eyes. The little Mermaid thought she had never in all her life seen anything so wonderful as that simple stretch of beach. And then she saw him. She hadn't realized that mortals were so small. And she thought she would like more than anything to keep one as a pet. Frightened by the small furry creature that made such fierce sounds, she swam farther out to sea. where the HMS Rollicking Dolphin lay at anchor. All right, my uncle. I want everything ship shape and Bristol fashion by eight bells. Belay that, you lovers. I want you to gudge in a brace bunk to the whisker boom and leech the boat rope to the cringle head or I'll streak every man jack of you from the forecastle to the poop deck. I'm going to drown the whole lot of us. Well, don't tell me an old sea dog like you is afraid of the water. Oh, no. Water's all very well in its place. A little hot water in a teapot, for instance. You mean you didn't want to go to sea? Oh, no. Now that I'm aboard, I love it. I can't get enough of it, really. No. There's nothing like the Navy. The sea air, the seasickness, exotic ports of call, the bad food. The constant back-breaking toil. The excitement of a storm at sea. The danger of being swept overboard in an hurricane. Marvellous, really, isn't it? Marvellous. Marvellous. Of course, it's different for you, Your Highness. What with you being prince and all. What do you mean? Well, the fun's over, isn't it? And no more carefree sailor's life for you. I mean, you have to go back to the palace and bore yourself to death, sitting in the lap of luxury while gorgeous naked women pop peeled grapes into your mouth. <laughs> Poor lad, it's oh, dreadful hard. But it is my duty. The sun was already dropping into the ocean when the little mermaid reached the ship. 
She knew it for what it was, for since her childhood she had seen the shadows of other ships as they passed over her underwater home. But now here was just such a ship, peopled by living, breathing mortals. twilight, his eyes were as blue as the sea. And when she looked into them, the little mermaid lost her heart. And I want every man jack of you to say, Ooh, or I'll know the reason why. Ooh, not yet! Ah. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
moment, the little mermaid was delighted that the handsome young sailor was coming to join her. But then she remembered. Only if he were dead could he visit her father's palace. No, he must not die. cargo to dry land. She was determined to save him. For his part, the prince dazed and delirious, responded as though in a dream. By now it was long past sunrise. And the Little Mermaid did not know what would become of her if she disobeyed her father and remained above the surface for another day. Sadly, she returned to her undersea home. Pearl, how was your day at the top? Father, I must return to him right away. Well, first you must tell me what has happened to you, Pearl of my heart. I met someone. Ah. Uh. Well, our little sister is finally in the social swim. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pearl, don't clam up. Tell us, what was he like? Well, his hair was very dark. Oh, Father, and his cheek was so tan. His eyes. Father, I must see him again. I'll bet he's dishy. He is very handsome. He sounds like the catch of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and he has legs. Legs? You don't mean he's a... Mortal. Oh, Pearl. You must forget him. Don't even think about it. Father! Coral and Emony, this is very serious. Your little sister has fallen in love. What is love? Love is the most dangerous weapon that humans possess. It, it can stab you deeper than any barb or spear. And once it has pierced your heart, your life will never be whole again. But I saved him, Father. If not for me, he would have drowned. And drown he will if he returns to the ocean with you. You must forget him. Well, I can't. You must, or else you will never find happiness. Well, if I can't be with him, I'll never be happy again. Of course you will. Of course you will, my little Pearl. There is no room in our world for human love. Ghastly about the ship that was wrecked in the bay here last night. Oh, dreadful catastrophe. <laughs> so I've heard. But it thought it makes me feel quite safe. Yes, but what a relief that almost all the sailors were saved. What a daring rescue. Uh, so I've been given to understand. Thought gives me palpitations. Oh, yes, a girl was to be faint away from all the excitement going on around here. If she could only get to see some of it for herself. Oh, sea shipwrecks. Meet sailors. Oh, <laughs> Your Highness. Very fortunate with your cocktail. Hello. I think something's finally about to happen.
Despite my warning, Pearl was determined to see her beloved again. Bucking up her courage, she went in search of the Sea Witch, a mysterious sorceress who inhabited a shadowy domain somewhere between the sea and the air. Little Mermaid knew that the Sea Witch exacted a bitter price of all who trafficked in her magic. None who visited the Sea Witch's cave returned unchanged. And some never came back at all. I know you. You're the youngest, aren't you? Opal? Jade? Tourmaline? Pearl. Oh, <laughs> I knew it had to be something in a semi-precious stone. So, <clears throat> I suppose you'd like me to show you something in a nice pair of legs. Legs? What would I do with legs? <laughs> Well, he's never going to fall in love with you if from the waist down you look like the seafood special. Then you know. Oh, of course I know. I'm a witch, aren't I? I have magical powers. Of course, to you, I probably look like some ugly old... Oh, no. No, I think you're really beautiful. You do? Absolutely. Well, kid... Since you've been so honest with me, I'm going to level with you. Don't do it. No guy is worth it. Oh, no, please. You've got to help me. Ah! You said help you. Now I have to help you. Oh. It's the witch's code. Oh, thank you. Don't thank me. Legs. For me? <laughs> A piece of cake. For you. We'll get to that. But remember, you are not going to be able to come back down here and complain to me. In fact, you're not going to be able to come back at all. Or not. No refunds, no exchanges. If I give you legs, you're stuck with them. I don't do tails. But will I be able to win his heart? You'd better. Because if he marries somebody else, you're sunk. Well, how long do I have? As long as you want, provided he doesn't marry another woman. In which case, the morning after his wedding night, your time is up! What happens then? As the sun rises on the happy couple, you lose your human form and turn into sea foam. Poof! Just like that! I told you it was a toughie. You haven't said anything to change my mind? How are you on pain? Because when you drink the witch's potion that changes your fish's tail into human legs, you will feel as if you are being cut in half by a double-edged sword. <sighs> After that... Every step you take will be as if you are treading on sharp knives. Don't look at me. I don't make this stuff up. I will endure all that. If only I can just tell him how I feel. Oh, I almost forgot. Talking is out. Excuse us. When you are in your human form, you will not be able to speak. Why? Rules of the game. You want something, you'll have to give something up in return. Besides, I'd like a new singing voice. <laughs> You're going to take my voice from me? I told you, I'm a witch! I may look like your mother's bridge partner, but I am not joking around here. I'm frightened. Good. Go home, why don't you? 
Find yourself a nice young merman and forget the whole thing. I can't. I love him. I was afraid you were going to say that. Well, honey, you are in deep trouble. You found out what love is. I know that I feel it, but what is it? Love is a disease only humans catch. Somehow you caught it. And when you caught it, you can never be rid of it. Here's the potion. Tomorrow morning, be sure you are beached and drink this up just as the sun rises. Thank you. Try love. The best thing you can say about it is it's good for business. It's really rather ironic my running into you like this. My father's been trying to get me to meet you for years. He has a silly idea that two people who are going to inherit neighboring kingdoms ought to, you know, have an awful lot in common. That's an astonishing coincidence, do you know? My father thinks exactly the same thing. Yes, he has this silly idea that. Two people who barely know each other ought to get married just because the two kingdoms join together. That, that They'd well, be awfully rich. Oh, <laughs> yes. And that their union would ensure peace and prosperity for all the subjects. I hate that kind of thing. He's so practical. What about that? What about... Look. Poor creature. I have the strangest feeling I've seen her somewhere before. You know, she's really rather lovely asleep like that. And even more lovely when she's awake. And how are you feeling this morning? Oh, poor thing. I don't think she can speak. Amelia, I believe she can understand what we're saying. You can, can't you? I wonder where she's from. Are you very far from home? Andrew, she's not deaf. Oh, no, quite. Are you quite alone in the world? With no one to look after you? Do you wish to remain here with us? Uh, just until you're feeling better, of course. Then so you shall. This is Princess Amelia, and I'm Prince Andrew. Oh, no, don't try to get up. At least, not until we fetch you something decent to wear. No, Andrew, you stay here and look after her. Yes. Well. Ah, breakfast, thank you. 
I hope you like breakfast. It's my favorite meal, actually. Is, is something wrong? Are the eggs too greasy or bacon not crispy enough? Well, don't tell me the toast is cold. I'd never forgive myself. Oh, you funny little thing. You don't eat this. It's garnish. Here. Try some sausage. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Here, now go ahead. Have some. No? All right, I'll eat it then. I'm starving. Mmm. You can't exist on air. Tell me, what do they eat for breakfast where you come from? Fish. Hmm. And what do they eat for luncheon? Fish? Well, what about tea? No, no, don't tell me. Dinner? Fish. <clears throat> don't they eat anything else? Clams. And oysters. How extraordinary. You really are quite the little sea sprite. We shall have to find you a name. Yes, what a beautiful pearl. Yes, yes, and a beautiful girl, too. Girl. Pearl. Oh, I see. Pearl, that's your name. You really are truly adorable. A little pearl from the sea. Oh, I, I was just sewing breakfast how to eat her pearl. Uh, pearl, how to eat her breakfast. Oh? Yes. Yes, it's really the perfect name for her, you know. Uh, uh, her being so, so rare and precious and, and coming from the sea and everything. I mean... The sea has been uncommonly generous this week. Hello, Pearl. This is for you. Oh! Oh, yes. She really is rather precious, isn't she? She is very pretty. Who? Our little castaway. Is she? Well, you said so yourself. Yes, she is rather pretty, isn't she? But not quite as pretty as you. Do you think I'm pretty? Not always. Really? Sometimes you're beautiful. Like now, for instance. I'm so glad you chose this moment to join us. Don't tell me this elegant young lady is the bedraggled little waif we fished off the beach yesterday. It is quite a transformation, isn't it, from sea urchin to a... What would you say she reminds you of? A little elfin creature. Not quite of this world. Like a little mermaid, perhaps? Yes, exactly. <gasps> Amelia, why don't you play something for us? Do you like music? Do you care to dance?
That evening, the Little Mermaid sisters sought her out and implored her to return to them and to her undersea home. But the Little Mermaid knew she could never join them. singing just now. What's this? Aren't these tears I see? Ah. Uh, you must miss your home and family very much. Oh, poor little wave. Don't cry. Look at your pretty face all wet. Forgive me, I... I didn't mean... I mean... You know what I mean. I'm sorry. Excuse me, I must go. Though touched by her innocence and beauty, his heart and hand rightfully belonged to the Princess Emilia. and they lived happily ever after. I always thought that they meant two people. Well, now we're alone and I'm in no position to take advantage of it. You are heartless. Completely. Yeah, help me up. Not yet. Andrew, you are about to ask me to marry you, are you not? You're going to get down on one knee. Then I may as well tell you that I'm completely resolved to accept. I expect it's inevitable that once in a while we shall have lovers' quarrels. Yes, I expect so. And then we shall kiss and make up. Perhaps. Well, let's practice. What, quarreling? No. Certainly. For someone who almost drowned, Paul doesn't seem at all afraid of the water. Perhaps he really is a little more man. Well? In that case, there's just one thing to do with her. Tommy Hara, please! <laughs> Andrew, what are we going to do about Pearl? Do? Yes. When we get married and go to your kingdom and live happily ever after and everything. I take her with us, of course. Oh. Yes, I was afraid you might say that. Why, don't you like her? Oh, I can't help liking her. It's just that I also can't help seeing she's in love with you. <laughs> Nonsense. It's not impossible, you know. You can be quite lovable. Yes, I can, can I? Well, this is serious. Amelia, are we having one of those little lover's quarrels you spoke of? I just wish that you'd speak to Paul about it. Well, why didn't you say so? I will go and speak with her at once. Poor Pearl. If you didn't love me, I'd be heartbroken. Pearl, Amelia has the silliest notion. She insists that you're in love with me. You are. Pearl. 
Pearl, I... I do love you. But I'm not in love with you. I'm in love with Amelia. And we're going to be married. We're both very, very fond of you. And, and we want you to be happy. And, and to be happy for us. Oh, Pearl, say that you are. I mean, I know you can't say that you are, but you are happy for us, aren't you? You're sure to find someone else. I thought you knew. The little mermaid felt as though her heart were breaking. Her beloved prince was lost to her, and on the morning after his wedding, she would be changed into sea foam and vanish, leaving no sign that she had ever existed. The wrecked ship had been salvaged from the shallow waters of the bay and newly outfitted for the return voyage. For the little mermaid, the day of the wedding passed as in a dream. It's too bad the captain's retired from the Navy. He would have hated to have missed your highness's wedding. He loved a wedding almost as much as he loved fireworks. <laughs> but he's happy now. He's been put in charge of a munitions factory, so now it can go and blow things up to his heart's content. <laughs> oh, well, now, uh, without further ado, I pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Uh, the groom may now kiss the bride. The lucky devil! <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the pain the little mermaid felt now was sharper than any she had ever known for she realized that with the dawn she would lose her human form and her spirit would dissolve into sea foam and her beloved prince would never know what had become of her. Pearl, listen to us. We went to see the sea witch. She made us give her our hair in return for this knife. You may still come back. All you need do is Kill the prince. Pierce him to the heart. And when his heart's blood spills on your human legs, they will change back into a tail. And then you may return to us and your undersea home. Come back to us, Pearl. Pearl, come back to us. Please, Pearl, come, come, come to back us. to us. mermaid lost all hope of capturing the love she had risked everything to win. Yet, even to save her own life, she could never harm her beloved prince. She felt her human body vanishing, becoming transparent. Soon she would be nothing more than a speck of sea foam on the surface of the ocean. And yet the little mermaid did not vanish, did not turn into a speck of sea foam, because she loved so generously with no thought of herself, 
My precious youngest daughter was permitted to become a spirit of the air, guarding and watching over the royal couple for the rest of their lives, which were long and happy. And even today, the spirit of the little mermaid befriends and protects all those true lovers whose love is as deep as the ocean and as true as her own unselfish heart. Since sailors have sailed the seas, they have told stories of the mermaids who live in the deep and come to the surface so rarely that they can only be glimpsed by those who know where to look. For the flash of a little white arm in the curl of a wave, for the glint of a tail rippling the waters of a quiet cove, for the glimmer of a small fair head peeping from behind the rocks, just as a wave breaks over them. sailor is left to wonder. Yet once upon a time, one mermaid did tarry long enough above the surface to encounter a handsome young sailor and to hold him in her arms. This is her story, the story of the little mermaid.
far below the waves, in the deepest part of the ocean, lived a little mermaid. Her name was Pearl, and she was my youngest daughter, the daughter of King Neptune. On the morning of her 21st birthday, I had given her permission to go up to the surface of the ocean for the very first time. Pearl was a charming creature, possessed of a delightful singing voice and the liveliest curiosity about the world of men, which she herself had never seen. And so, when her older sisters, Coral and Anemone, came to wish her a happy birthday, she was eager to question them about the world above. Oh, those mortals are impossible, always spying on us. Yes, so trying to catch us with us. Of course, it's different for you, Your Highness. What with you being prince and all. What do you mean? Well, the fun's over, isn't it? And no more carefree sailor's life for you. I mean, you have to go back to the palace and bore yourself to death, sitting in the lap of luxury while gorgeous naked women pop peel grapes into your mouth. <laughs> Poor ladies. Oh, dreadful eyes. But it is my duty. The sun was already dropping into the ocean when the little mermaid reached the ship. She knew it for what it was, for since her childhood she had seen the shadows of other ships as they passed over her underwater home. But now here was just such a ship, peopled by living, breathing mortals. Deepening twilight, his eyes were as blue as the sea. And when she looked into them, the little mermaid lost her heart. And I want every man jack of you to say, Ooh, or I'll know the reason why. Ooh, not yet! Ah. No. Ooh. Hooks aren't the half of it, my dear. But I suppose you must find out for yourself. I know I did. Only promise me one thing. You must never forget. This is your home. This is where you belong, little pearl of my heart. I promise, Father. That's my good little mermaid. <laughs> the little mermaid bade her father goodbye and swam upward toward the light. She knew that the big ball of fire that hung in the sky above the ocean was called the sun. Today, she would see it for the first time feel its warmth. She had spent so many hours imagining what the world above the surface of the ocean would be like, when at long last, 
She saw it for the first time. She could hardly believe her eyes. The little mermaid thought she had never in all her life seen anything so wonderful as that simple stretch of beach. And then she saw him. She hadn't realized that mortals were so small. And she thought she would like more than anything to keep one as a pet. Frightened by the small furry creature that made such fierce sounds, she swam farther out to sea. Where the HMS Rollicking Dolphin lay at anchor. All right, Miyaki. I want everything ship shape and Bristol fashion by eight bells. Belay that, you lovers. I want you to gudgeon a brace bunk to the whisker boom and leech the boat rope to the cringle head or I'll streak every man jack of you from the boatle to the poop deck. It's long to drown the whole lot of us. Well, don't tell me an old sea dog like you was afraid of the water. Oh, no. Water's all very well in its place. A little hot water in a teapot, for instance. You mean you didn't want to go to sea? Oh, no. Now that I'm aboard, I love it. I can't get enough of it, really. No. There's nothing like the Navy. The sea air. The seasickness. Exotic ports of call. The bad food. The constant back-breaking toil. The excitement of a storm at sea. The danger of being swept overboard in an hurricane. Marvelous, really, isn't it? Marvelous. Marvelous. Nonsense! 
They own the whole planet. When you go up to the surface today, take my advice and stay away from them. Well, how am I going to do that unless I know what they look like? Well, I saw one once. They're not so very ugly. You did? Tell us about it. Yes, tell us about it. Well, his skin was very, very white. And his eyes were open very wide, but he didn't seem to be looking at anything. He was just floating face down, quite still. He wasn't frolicking or looking for food or anything that's because he was dead dead men cannot live in our world nor are we in theirs they are mortal human beings and we are mythical creatures oh what does mythical mean it means that men are always making up stories about us Yes, they say we are sirens. Sirens? <laughs> sirens are another branch of the family altogether. They don't speak to us, and we don't speak to them. I still wish I knew what mortals looked like. Well, for one thing, they have legs so they can walk around instead of swim. Legs? And walk? You mean like the crabs? <laughs> well, sort of, but not really. You see, they're split up the middle. And they walk around on these little sticks, on dry land. What is dry? Anything that isn't wet, silly. Although it has its wet parts, too. Well, I can't wait to go to the surface. Oh, yes, you can. First, we have to give you our present, Pearl. <gasps> we made it ourselves. Oh, Coral and Nimini, it's beautiful! Father is waiting for you. Swim along now. Among underwater circles, King Neptune was still considered a very handsome ruler. And if over the years my figure had thickened slightly about the middle, why my beard had grown almost long enough to cover it. the birthday mermaid well i'm finally on my way up to the surface not so fast my little pearl for some reason this reminded me of you oh father it's beautiful i'll never take it off now you can be on your way but remember you must return by sunrise tomorrow father why can i only stay for one day uh, a lot can happen in one day but I've waited so long. I know. When I was your age, I felt the same way. But you want to live to be 300 years old? You must learn to move a little more slowly. The world of men can be very dangerous. Oh, I know all about the world of men, Father, and their hooks. 